Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer together on this Friday the 8th of July. We are in ordinary time and there is nothing uh, particular to commemorate today. So uh, familiar liturgy for us this morning. Let's spend a moment in quiet and stillness as we come before Almighty God in prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the book of Judges, chapter 11, starting at verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh. He passed on to Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whoever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return victorious from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's to be offered up by me as a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand. He inflicted a massive defeat on them from Aroah to their neighbourhood of Minith. Twenty towns and as far as Abel Karam. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his house at Mizpah, and there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and with dancing. She was his only child. He had no son or daughter except her. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You have become the cause of great trouble to me. For I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. She said to him, My father, if you have opened your mouth to the Lord, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has given you vengeance against your enemies, the Ammonites. And she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Grant me two months, so that I may go and wander on the mountains and bewail my virginity, my companions and I. Go he said, and sent her away for two months. So she departed, she and her companions, and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. At the end of two months, she returned to her father, who did with her according to the vow he had made. She had never slept with a man. So there arose an Israelite custom that for four days every year, the daughters of Israel would go out to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gilead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Short reflection then on our reading from Judges by Catherine Williams. There's no getting around it. This passage of scripture is horrific and sadly, Jephthah's actions are also unnecessary. His lack of understanding both of God and the faith of the Israelites he is commanding has tragic consequences. There's no need for a sacrificial vow. God has already placed his spirit on Jephthah and assured him of victory. There's no need to bribe or placate God. Only trust is required. When Jephthah's daughter runs to greet him, the ramifications of his vow become clear. Jephthah has a way out. Mosaic law makes provision for such vows to be rescinded and expressly bans child sacrifice. Jephthah blames his daughter for his actions and she is compliant to her father's will merely requesting a two-month stay of execution. Time for Jephthah to come to his senses, but when she returns from the hills, Jephthah kills her. Why did no one stop him? 
Why didn't she run away? And where was God? The God who stayed Abraham's hand, saving Isaac from sacrifice. Sadly, this story is not unique. Every day, women and children are abused, coerced and sacrificed to satisfy human pride and honour. Like Jephthah's daughter, they are unnamed, objectified, with little freedom to make choices in the shaping of their lives, often blamed for others' violent actions and insecurities. Where love should be, pride, domination and a violence hold sway. And sometimes God seems absent. It is crucial, therefore, that this is recorded in the Bible. Difficult questions over a difficult passage this morning, but uh, a challenging um, reflection nonetheless. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. For our prayers of intercession this morning, we're going to use the five finger prayer method. Um, so you need to simply look at your hand uh, for our prayers this morning. There is no responses to join in with. As we look at our hands before us, we start with our thumb, the uh, digit closest to our person. And as we look at our thumb, we spend a moment uh, praying for those closest to us in our lives, our friends and our families, those whom God has given to us to make the journey through life easier, but those often who are also close enough to hurt us and annoy us the most, and we them. So we lift before God this morning all of those who are closest to us. And we ask God's blessing upon them today and always. As we move on to our index finger, the finger that we often use for pointing, we spend a moment thinking of those who point us in the right direction. So we pray for all of those who are tasked with pointing us in the right direction in church. We pray for our bishops, Bishop Stephen and Bishop Gavin. We pray for Archdeacon Judy. We pray for the priests in our benefice team. That their pointing uh, in the right direction in our faith would be wise and kind. We pray too for all of those who point us in the right direction in other areas of life. We pray for educators, those known to us and those who have been educators of us in the past. We ask that God would bless each of these pointers with wisdom and knowledge. As we move to our middle finger, the finger that is often taller than the others, we pray for those who are tallest in our community, those who stand above the rest because of their office and role. We pray for the government. At a time when policies and politics seems so divided, we pray for peace. 
Again, we pray for wisdom. We pray for compassion for us all as we look to those who lead us in our communities. As we look to our ring finger, the finger that is actually weakest and can't move alone, we think of those who are weakest in our communities. We spend a moment in quiet as we name before God those known to us who suffer in mind, body or spirit. We pray too for those with whom no one to pray for them, those whose suffering is known to God alone. We ask for God's healing, for God's strength and for God's love to be tangible with these people today. And finally, before we finish praying, we look to our little fingers, the smallest of all the fingers, but uh, not uh, insignificant in its place. And we remember to pray for ourselves. We pray for our day, for the tasks and all that we are about today. We ask that we would know God's presence with us throughout this day and throughout this week. And we make all of these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it has been wonderful to pray with you again this morning. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. God bless.